Thank you and good morning. My name is David Wallace and I'm with East Penn Energy Solutions. My goal is really to help people understand their house, make it energy efficient, and hopefully maybe save some money, help the environment. There's a bunch of many things that can, that can motivate you to help you conserve. Mainly it's about energy conservation and saving money, increasing comfort in your house. One of the things that I, I try to promote is what's called an energy audit. Now, audit sounds like a bad word because it's usually, if, you're tell, if you find out you're getting audited, it's usually by the IRS and it's usually not a, not a pleasant experience. It's not an audit like that. Sometimes some people call it an energy assessment. What people do, building performance professionals will come in, home building performance professionals will come in, diagnose your home, run some diagnostic tests, locate those areas and make a recommendation to you. All right? That's what an energy audit does. There's a couple components to an energy audit. Basically, it's a health and safety check. Um, it is also a combustion anal analyzation. We will look at your heater to, to evaluate its efficiency. And lastly, we use a what's called a blower door to assess where those leaks are. And I'll cover those here in a minute. A health and safety check. A couple of things that we'll do just in general. Usually when we get out of the car, we put on a personal carbon monoxide detector. We want to see what the carbon monoxide is out is outside of your house, around your house, not just in your combustion, what we call the combustion appliance zone, which essentially is your basement where your heater is, or wherever your combustion appliance zone is. The combustion meaning not a heat pump, but a combustion appliance, like a gas or an oil furnace or boiler. All right? So that's what we want to check. We want to know what the carbon monoxide is in there. And then sometimes we'll look for moisture because moisture is an indication of maybe another issue that, ne that needs to be dealt with. Uh, we will also walk around the house, look at window sills, look at gutters, look at downspouts, look at grating because if you have moisture in your basement, maybe it's a grating issue. It only happens when it rains, which, well, it's been a dry summer, but we're getting into the rainy season again. Again, the fall tends to be a real humid time of the year, uh, moist time of the year. So we would look at all those issues. And then the combustion is appliance testing, we utilize what's called an analyzer. This is an analyzer. We put a hole in your vent stack just outside the boiler or furnace, stick the probe in here, and this looks for a whole bunch of things. It, namely, what we're after is the efficiency of the appliance. We also check for how much carbon monoxide it is emitting carbon monoxide, how much it's, it's emitting. If it's not burning cleanly or clearly, then it'll emit a lot of carbon monoxide. Obviously, we know that's an issue, okay? And then finally, what we'll, oh, the other things we'll look for is, is combustion, is, is the efficiency. We'll look for uh, the draft to make sure that it is going up the chimney. You'd be surprised. Sometimes it's going up your house and not through the chimney. So we want to establish what kind of a draft there is. And then we want to establish in a worst case scenario how that draft is. So what's a worst case scenario? So if you have a, a, a gas water heater right next to it and you have a gas furnace or a boiler right next to it, are those both going to function when they're both on at the same time? Plus maybe your fan in your, on, your, on your stove? All of those things are sucking air out of your house. So how is your normal boiler going to be able to, on its own power, go up the chimney? So that's kind of the worst case scenario test. And we do find problems. Sometimes a boiler is really strong or else the connection between the two wa hot water heater and the, and the boiler vent isn't correct so that usually the smaller BTU appliance, meaning the water heater, suffers. So there's your health and safety check. Lastly, we get into what's called a blower door test. And the idea is with a blower door, I didn't bring it because it's big. It fits in your, usually your front door. It's a, uh, mine is red. There's, there's two main manufacturers and it's got a big fan in it. And it's got a handheld computer and that blower door essentially is going <laughs> to suck the air out of your house. It's not going to suck the cat. It's not going to suck your kids clothes or all the dirt. People ask me that. Do I have to put things away? Uh, I, the only time I've had an instance was a carpet, an entry carpet right in front of the fan. The fan was up to a pretty high RPM and it started to lift the carpet so I had to pull it out. 
all right? The idea of the blower door is to synthesize the worst winter day you can imagine. Basically sometime in January when you have a 20 mile an hour breeze on your house at all times. That's essentially what it is. And if you have leaks in your houses, that's when you walk around and you notice that your, your furnace is running and the draperies on your window are moving. That's kind of the, what we're trying to synthesize. And then what we do is go around with some devices, either a thermal camera, there's a thermal camera, or a draft detector, which what this does is, in certain situations, it starts making puffs of smoke. And then it's relatively neutral in buoyance. You see how it just very really slowly rises. And then you can go around and find drafts in your house, around your windows, around your ductwork, around your doors. Sometimes it's in your closets. And then you make a plan of attack. And then finally, what we want to do is go around and actually look at and inspect some of these areas very closely, like your attic for insulation and air leaks. We want to look at your basement for air leaks and insulation. Because essentially with that stack effect, we're not so much concerned with what's happening in the living room walls or the bedroom walls. We want to know what's going on with the ceiling and the basement. So if you were to do a retrofit, the best place to invest your money is in the basement and in the attic. And some of the things we find are quite surprising. A foundation wall with open cinder blocks. Well, that's just letting air in right from the ground. And this very same house, we had ductwork that wasn't even connected. He didn't know it. So all this air is blowing out into the basement, not going up into the main part of the house. So in, essentially, what it looks like is your house, air coming in the basement, through your house, and up through the, 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 the uh, leaks a leak around. detector. Now, we've all heard about instances in different municipalities where houses blow up and all that kind of well, this will go out and detect 15 different combustible gases. And that's what we look for. I have found gas leaks out in houses. And usually, it's not unusual, one of them I found a gas leak in the manifold. And before I was done the audit, the gas company was there, had the meter off, and fixed it. So that's what we were looking for, gas leaks. It's not oil. Oil isn't necessarily a combustible gas. It's a liquid. But if you have natural gas or propane in your house, this will detect leaks. I have found leaks, and usually I mark them, locate them, and the homeowner will call the plumber, heating contractor, or if it's on the utility side of the meter, then the utility will come out and make the, make the fix. Along with, with gas leak, we look for the, the, the combustion analyzer, and we look for uh, carbon monoxide in, in that area. So those are the basic things for the health and safety check, as well as moisture.